Now, you would think when it would come to somebody like a Cody Rhodes, especially the history that's been there in the past, you would expect me to find any and every opportunity available to knock the guy whenever possible. That is the type of typical biased behavior that you would come to expect out of this wrestling community, especially if you follow guys like Meltzer and Alvarez and others over the years, and especially nowadays. Like, you expect that type of bias to come through. And certainly, you know, there's no love loss for me when it comes to Cody Rhodes. You know, what I said was true. He's a liar. He's exhibited other instances of being just flat out a liar. Nonetheless, unlike some of these other clowns like the Meltzers and the Alvarezes of the world, is I can look past my bias and still say the thing that needs to be said, regardless of how I might personally or professionally feel about somebody, and compartmentalize the two. That is certainly possible. And what I don't think anybody could say fairly about me is in the last two years or so, is that I've only ever taken pot shots or only been negative towards Cody Rhodes. You could say that, but you would be wrong. You could say that, but that would make you a liar just like Cody. So I see a lot of people starting to make these comparisons, and I knew they were eventually going to happen. And I'd seen them coming since day number one. They've been out there since day number one. But apparently after the Double or Nothing show, they only grew in their volume that Cody Rhodes is just another version of the Memphis mid-card piece of crap, Double J. Now, of course, you talk about me when it comes to Double J, I don't like anything about him professionally. I think he's overrated as all hell. There are a lot of things professionally I do not like about him. Period. And a lot of it is made for really good banter on the show historically over the years. That's an example of taking the bias and turning it into a shtick and a gimmick. You know, gimmicks, those things you don't really get much in wrestling anymore. But when they get over and they really work, people still remember you for them years down the road. That's exactly what you can look at when it comes to me. And you know the drill. See the shirt. But I got to defend Cody here. And yeah, it doesn't even feel right to say so. But there are very, 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 very few similarities between Cody Rhodes and what he's doing with All Elite Wrestling and what Double J did first with TNA and then eventually Global Farce Wrestling. You can sit there and say, well, we're both second generation guys who got their opportunities in large part because of their daddy's name. That is certainly true. No question. No doubt about it. Double J's dad was a promoter. Cody's dad, Hall of Famer. Obviously, like, nepotism matters in this world. And it opened pathway and opportunity. Certainly both of them present themselves and project themselves as the types of guys that feel like their value and worth is much greater than what the reality actually shows. And that is certainly true, I feel, for both guys. But in a lot of ways, it's where the conversations kind of end. You could say, well, they both seem like they fit best in a big company in the mid-card. Yes. Okay, fair comparison. But, but we need to be realistic here and not allow current biases or hatred to cloud our better judgment and cloud the way that we remember history. You can look at the way Cody Rhodes went about helping to create AEW and say he didn't do it on his own. And he did not create it, it seems like, for the sole express purpose of making himself a world champion somewhere else. Whereas you can point to Double J and what he did with TNA and starting that company and always seemed to want to be in the world title picture. Everything that he did, even if it wasn't for the world title, those rare times that it wasn't, was presented in such a way that it was the most important thing and the only thing that mattered on the entire show. You could talk about the fact, whereas they bring in somebody to face Cody Rhodes and it's kind of more in the mid-card, they would bring in for TNA these big names of the past. 
the big names of the recent past, like legit major names, major stars, and have them all put over Double J. They're not doing that with Cody Rhodes. If Cody Rhodes was just like Double J, he would already have had the world championship at least once, if not multiple times already in AEW, just for the seven plus months that they've existed. He certainly would. Double J spent years at the top of his company putting other people down in the process to help maintain his spot and keep himself where he was. He brought in other people like a Vince Russo and a Dutch Mantel to help keep him and book him in a top spot that he frankly didn't merit and deserve. All the while, you got Cody Rhodes as just one cog in the wheel. He's one of the executive vice presidents, but he's not the only one. And I would sit there and say, arguably... That if you're going to talk about a Cody Rhodes in such a way, where are the world title victories? Where are the main event pay-per-view matches? And I would even defend this. Like, just because he's one of the guys in charge doesn't mean that he shouldn't have a feature prominent spot. He is, as a byproduct, one of the bigger names in that company. And he is a bigger name than Omega, a bigger name than the Bucks, and all these New Japan cucks and Meltzer cucks might not like that, but that's a fact. Because he's had way more exposure in his career due to the machine of WWE. That's not opinion, that's fact. So as a result, guys like him and Moxley and Jericho and so forth, like those are the guys that should be featured prominently. Those are the guys that should be the biggest of deals, especially initially. They shouldn't be going out there and working 50-50 damn matches with everybody. And to Cody's detriment sometimes, he has been, and it's been foolish. You wouldn't dare see that crap with Jared in his freaking prime. He's only working 50-50 matches with guys that are bigger names than him just so that way he can bring them down a peg and put himself over in a company where it didn't freaking matter. I don't see Cody bringing in a bunch of people just to book him at the top. I don't see Cody always being in the main event match. I don't see Cody being in title match after title match, a winning title after world title. And the fact that there was a television title created and he may have happened to won it, so what? It's not the world title. Like, damn, you damned if you do and you damned if you don't. There are plenty of reasons to not like Cody Rhodes. But even just ostensibly, like, objectively, looking at them as talents. Like, Cody's a better athlete than Double J. Cody's certainly, at his best, better on the microphone than Double J. Uh, both of them are pretty stupid characters for me, especially when you're trying to portray Cody Rhodes as a babyface. Like, who in the hell would actually buy that garbage crap? Much better as a heel. MGS the face, not Cody. But nonetheless... Like, we shouldn't make comparisons that aren't appropriate. We shouldn't make comparisons that don't really fit. If Cody was the company's first world champion, or had already won the world championship, lost it, and then won it back, if he had beaten pretty much everybody else, if the one person he happened to lose to was Jericho, who he specially brought in, so that way he could eventually beat him, then you can make the Double J comparisons. But you can't do that. The reality is, the dude is now a mid-card television champion, isn't he? On a show and a brand where he's an executive vice president. That's not Double J worthy at all. And whereas you can make the argument back in the day, Double J would bring in a Raven, a Sting, every damn buddy Booker T under the sun so he could work with him and ultimately try to beat him. Cody's working with who? Guys like Lance Archer? Those B dudes like the Blade and the Butcher? Like, how is that comparable in any freaking way whatsoever? I am all for crapping and dumping all over Cody Rhodes whenever it is appropriate, whenever it is valid. This is certainly not a valid comparison. And I would hope, if anything else, when it comes to somebody like me, who in theory would have a lot of skin in the game here because of the professional distaste I have for freaking Double J. 
and the, to the point where I don't even say his actual name, you'll notice that, to the personal distaste and professional distaste that I have for Cody Rhodes, you would think you would look at me and you would sit there and say, you know what? I would refer, defer to him as a pretty good judge on this. Because if anybody would have a reason to lump in this guy with this guy to perhaps provide his channel and himself with a gimmick that he so desperately needs, it would be me, but you don't see me doing that. Why? Because it's not an appropriate comparison by any stretch of the imagination, and it should stop. Lots of things to knock Cody on. But comparing him to the Memphis mid-card piece of crap? Maybe if he starts hawking 24 karat gold bar multi-level marketing pyramid schemes on the AEW website, then you can start talking about it. Or if he starts booking himself in every world title match, then you can start talking about it. Until then, shut up, because the comparison absolutely sucks.